Hey folks, in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to make this scene here. Although you're not going to use this scene as a final piece, it's a really good technique to learn this because it can be used to make portals. Whether you're doing a VFX shot or a fully pledged 3D scene, it's a great illusion where you can have people coming through a portal and you look the other side and there's nothing there or people walking through a mirror. What we're going to do is set up a holdout material, duplicate the scene and we're going to set the scene to render different layers and then we're gonna stitch it all together to come up with this illusion here without further ado let's get to it the first thing I'm going to do add a default cube shift a add mesh cube I'll then go into edit mode I'll go into face select mode you got vertices edges faces or one two three retrospectively go to face select mode we'll select this front face I'm gonna hit I for inset and then point one and that should inset it by point one I'm then going to go into side view and I'll enable x-ray mode and then I'm going to hit E and I'm going to hold down control so it snaps to the grid and I'm going to bring it back to around about there. I'm now going to disable the x-ray mode. I'm going to hit control R and we'll add a loop cut and I'll drag this forward to around about there and we're going to duplicate that. So shift D, we've duplicated that geometry and then I'm going to hit F for fill. I'll then click P for separate and we'll go by selection. So now it's a separate object. So I'll go out of edit mode. I've selected that object. We're going to name these, name this first one box. This second one, I'm going to rename it to glass. I'm going to mute the glass and then I'm going to hit shift A and we're going to add mesh and we'll go for the monkey. We'll go to the modifiers. I can add a modifier subdivision surface by clicking here or alternatively I can hit control 2 and that will add a subdivision surface at level 2. I'll then hit Z and shade smooth. I'll go into front view mode. I'm going to go into edit mode on Suzanne and I'm just going to scale her down to around about there just so she fits in there nicely. Let's just set up the materials. If I drag this up here, I go into the material editor or the shader editor. I'll go over here. We're going to add two materials to this cube. So one, two. The first material, we'll just call this uh, base. The second material, we'll call it holdout. Okay, so the base material, it's going to be straightforward. We're going to keep the material simple, full roughness, and um, we'll set it to bright white, and that will do for that one. The monkey, I'll use that base material select this cube and the holdout material we're going to delete the principled bsdf and we're going to add shift a shader and holdout and we just connect that up to the surface there let's set the holdout material so i'm going to go into edit mode we're going to face select mode i'll select this back face hit control plus and that will select all the connected faces but not this one i just want these edges here and this one here so with those selected click the holdout click assign and what that will do is if I go into, we're going to use cycles, what that will do, it should make it transparent. You can't actually see just yet because we haven't got a world set up. The next thing I'm going to do, I'm going to add a couple of lamps. I'm going to hit shift A, we'll go for light, area light. We're going to front view, this is going to wireframe view so we can see what we're doing. I'm going to drag this up on the Z axis, so G, Z. I'm going to snap it to the grid. I want to make sure that it's below the ceiling of this cube, so G, Z and we'll just bring that down to around about there. I'm also going to change the size while I'm here. So we'll just bring this out to around about there. And just make sure that it fits in nicely. Excellent, it's not touching any edges. Go into render view. And I'm going to change the colour to say maybe blue, a nice light blue. Set it to 25 watts. Let's just set up the glass material. I've reactivated my glass material. I'm going to the materials and I'm going to click new. With this, I'm going to delete the BSDF. I'm going to add shift a shader glass and we'll plug that straight into there see what we got okay we've got the glass shader i'm going to hit shift a add texture we'll go for noise texture you'll have to enable the add-on node wrangler so go into your add-ons uh, preferences type in node and then with this one here make sure that that's enabled when that's enabled click your noise texture and hit ctrl t and that will add these two nodes here i'll then drag the factor into the roughness and i'm going to change it to 4d and then hit shift a add converter color ramp chuck that in between there now we'll bring the black across and we'll bring the white across you can kind of see what's happening now I'm going to take the detail up to 4 and the roughness up to 0.75. Maybe I'll add a bit of distortion as well, 0.25. And we'll bring the scale up to, say, 8. We're just going to drag these flags 
and I'm also going to set it to ease. So now there's a bit of roughness, it's kind of like a dirty window. Maybe I'll drag this white value down a bit and we won't have it pure white. We'll have it set to say 0.25 or 0.3, maybe 0.4. I'm going to set up a world texture now, environment texture. I'll set the strength of the background. If that's not there, you go to uh, shader and background and that should add this node here. I'm going to set that to a value of one. I'm going to hit shift A, add texture, sky texture. I'm going to plug that into here. It's going to be way too bright. I'll actually set this to say 0.1 and I'll drag the sun intensity down to maybe 0.25. I might need to bring it down a bit more. Let's just add a ground plane. So I'm going to hit shift A, add mesh plane and then go into edit mode and we'll scale that up by 10. Go out of edit mode and we'll drag that to the base of the cube. G, Z, drag it down to round about there and I might add a subdivision surface just to round it off. We'll give it maybe 5 on the viewport and the render let's just see where we've got so far so if i click this button here yep as you can see the holdout material is actually see-through the default scene in blender is a gray background and that's what that's replicating so it's actually like a transparency pass so if i go over to here into my render tab and i go into where is it film and then enable transparency you can see what's happening but we still got suzanne inside here i'm going to hide my glass i'm going to select this lamp here go to front view go into wireframe I'm going to hit shift D, duplicate that and then rotate it 180 degrees, R180. And then we're going to drag this down on the Z axis. And again, we're just going to make sure that that's one notch above this floor plane here. G, Z. Go into render view and we're going to change the colour, maybe something like orange. I'm going to change the value of the shader. So I go to object view, we're going to select slot 1, which was the base material and I'm going to turn this down something around there just so we got a nice medium point we can see the detail in there I might even take Suzanne and just rotate her on the x-axis slightly just so we get a bit more shadow on her face you can see her features not that it matters too much because it's not about Suzanne this is about the method select my glass now as you can see when I've selected my glass you can see the lamps on the glass and we don't really want that effect we want to be able to see the box itself with the area light selected we're going to select do this for both of them we're just going to deactivate transmission there you go it's disappeared and on the orange one we're going to deactivate transmission and we can't see it now we can just see the cube which is what we want so now we're going to arrange our collections we're going to select the area the two area lights the box the glass and suzanne and we're going to hit m for move we're going to add a collection and we'll call this box and we'll just move it into that collection and then this ground plane i'll just rename this ground with the ground selected i'm going to hit m for move and add collection and we'll call this holdout and we'll move it to the holdout collection. We're gonna to have to enable some extra features up here. By the way, if you can't see all these icons here, just enable them here. We're gonna enable these two as well. So now we've enabled those two. I guess the next thing to do is set up a camera controller. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, Add, and we'll go to Empty, and we'll choose Sphere. I'll just scale that up a little bit so we can see what we're doing. I'm gonna change this back to my Timeline Editor. Go to timeline i'll drag this up on frame one of this object on the z rotation i'm going to add a keyframe i'm going to change this to 240 frames and we'll skip to the last frame and then we'll add one and then i'm going to hit 360 degrees on the z axis and i'm going to add a keyframe there by default this adds like an interpolation using bezier curves we don't want that so basically it will start spinning slowly it will speed up and then it will slow down We don't want that interpolation, we just want a constant speed. With all these keyframes selected here, I'm going to hit T and I'm going to change the interpolation type to linear. Now it should just be a constant speed. Now we're going to take my camera and I'm going to shift click the empty object and I'm going to hit control P, set the parent object, keep transform. Now when my empty rotates, my camera rotates. This empty object, I'm going to move to the main collection. So M for move and I'm going to select that collection. I'm just going to close this graph editor window. I'll reduce the size of my timeline. We don't need to see that. Right, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to duplicate the scene. So I'm going to hit this button here and I'm going to select full copy. So now we've got two scenes. We'll select 
the first scene and we're going to go to this holdout collection click this button to disable it we're going to go to the second scene we're going to mute Suzanne we're going to mute the lights we're going to select indirect only for the uh, box collection and for the box object itself we're going to go to visibility and we're going to mute diffuse glossy transmission and volume scatter and we'll do the same for the glass object mute those I'm then going to switch back to the first scene and we'll go to compositing click use nodes before I do that we'll go back to shading and we're going to go to this layers tab on scene one and we'll go to passes and we're going to enable environment and we'll do the same on the second scene scene 001 enable environment switch back to the first scene and we go to compositing now we're going to duplicate this render layer here shift D we'll add that there and then we'll set this one to the second scene so I'm going to add three alpha over nodes one shift D two shift D three the first one is going to be the environment because that's going to be the background the second one we're going to plug this alpha over into there and then the second scene into the bottom socket here and then we're going to plug this alpha over into this one and we'll plug the image into the bottom socket there and then we'll plug that into there so now when I go to render it's going to render out both scenes and then it's going to automatically composite them together I'll show you what these do in a minute but before we do that so we'll make sure that we're on scene one we're going to change the render settings light paths I'm going to deactivate core sticks on the reflective and refractive I'm also going to change my max samples to 256 I don't need it too high I'll set the noise threshold to 0.025 so it will speed up render times I'll go to scene 2 and I'm going to do the same here 256 and I'll change the noise threshold to 0.025 I'll flick back to scene 1 and then I'm going to hit F12 and there we have it that's the trickery we'll go to the compositor I'll show you what all these individual things do let's just deactivate all those obviously the environment is the environment background should be a similar result there apart from the floor masked out and the bottom image is the floor plane and the top image is the box with the monkey in so the idea is we mix the environment together which gives us this result and then we want to mix another alpha over in there and we add the floor plane that will go on top this is like a stacking system it's the opposite to Photoshop we're actually stacking in reverse the bottom socket will overlap the environment socket and then of course the next overlap would be this one so this one then sits on top I could change the direction of the Sun because it's given us a bit of a strange shadow here that's easy enough to fix so let's just uh, go into the shader editor I'm just going to enable the holdout floor and we'll change the direction of the Sun quick so you go to your world settings let's just give it a rotation say something like that maybe take the elevation up I'll mute the holdout again that's not actually going to work because I'd have to delete the other scene and recopy it again so let's just uh, put in some numbers that are quite familiar 180 and maybe 45 degrees and then we go to scene 2 so 45 and 180 and then go back to scene 1 this is the thing you want to make sure before you duplicate to another scene you want to make sure that all these settings are exactly how you want them otherwise you basically have to delete your second scene and then duplicate this one again which is a bit annoying so from here I'm just gonna hit F12 so that's the holdout material in a nutshell it's a really handy node to use it makes a great illusion you can use this for multiple different purposes I've had a glass table where the camera is panning in but is actually panning into another world so that's basically the tutorial it's a really handy material you can create some awesome illusions like portals you can make camera track scenes and have these portals where things appear from nowhere I really encourage you to experiment with this familiarize yourself with this Technique. maybe even watch this tutorial a couple of times just so you've got it compounded in your head and then it becomes second nature okay folks that's it for this tutorial if you enjoyed it please consider liking and subscribing thanks for watching